Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I will be talking about the Cloud Controller Manager. This is the last installment in the Kubernetes Control Plane series that I've been doing. So feel free to check out the prior videos. Uh, in this video, we're just gonna talk about what the Cloud Controller Manager does, how it interacts with the actual cloud provider itself and some of the controllers that it uh, manages. So let's jump into the content right away. So first of all, the Cloud Controller Manager links your cluster to your cloud provider's API. So there are certain things within your cluster that you're gonna to have to do that you cannot do internally. You can manage a pod internally, but you can't really manage a, a node internally because a node is a resource that has to come from somewhere else and be brought into your cluster. There are certain things you can uh, do with a node once it's set up, but uh, in order to like, bring the node up and uh, provision certain resources around the node, you will have to integrate with whatever external cloud provider you're using to deploy your cluster, assuming that you are deploying to a cloud provider. It is built using plugins that cloud providers develop for Kubernetes. So uh, the good thing about this is that the whatever cloud provider you're using will have their own uh, cloud controller manager uh, consisting of a number of plugins that provide the functionality that we require. It embeds cloud specific logic in the Kubernetes cluster. So again, there will be certain things that you need to do uh, that are specific to your cloud. So if you need to go away and set up a new uh, node God, man, the leaf blowers. So it embeds cloud specific logic in your Kubernetes cluster. So for example, if we, if we need to go and set up a, a node, the way that we do that will be different if we are deploying on EKS versus on GKE. Those are the uh, Kubernetes solutions that Google provide and Amazon provide. And obviously, uh, when we need to set some new resource up, whether it be a node, a service, or a route, or anything like that, the logic for us to uh, call that external API um, and get that set up, um, call it with whatever parameters we need to call it with, that will have uh, you know slight differences across different cloud providers. So. That is, is what we mean here by the, the cloud-specific logic. We're, there's just going to be variances between uh, how we do things with different mm -hmm. providers. Next, we're going to look at the different controllers that the cloud controller manager encompasses. So the first one is the node controller. So it updates node objects when new servers are created in your cloud infrastructure. It updates a node object with corresponding server's unique identifier. So again, this is all information that will be stored in your cloud provider. It's not something that the Kubernetes uh, system itself will have access to. So we need to make API calls to the cloud provider and get that information back so that when, then we can update the uh, representation of the node within our Kubernetes cluster, and that's the, the node object. It annotates and labels node objects with specific cloud specific information. And it obtains the nodes host name and network addresses. Again, all of this will be information that the cloud provider will have, but we won't necessarily have initially within our Kubernetes cluster. So we go away, we get, we get that information and we update the uh, node object with that information. And it also verifies the nodes health. So if you are to set up a, a VM within a particular net cloud provider, let's say it's uh, Google, you're, you're using Google Compute Engine to create a VM, that VM will have uh, basically health checks to ensure that the VM is working as expected. And when we set up a node in GKE, which is Google's uh, Kubernetes engine, the same thing will happen. We'll have the same underlying uh, virtual machine um, that you know runs, but it's just part of a Google Kubernetes engine uh, cluster 
so we'll have all the built-in health checks and so on that uh, a normal GCE uh, VM would have. Next is the route controller. So what does a route controller do? It configures routes so that containers across different nodes can communicate. It may allocate blocks of IP for the pod network and it interacts with VPC network slash sub, sub network. So when we set up a, uh, a new project in one of our cloud providers, we will set up a sub network for our cluster. And when that sub network is set up, different events in our cluster may uh, require us to update uh, routes within the sub network, update different, uh, you know, IP blocks and so on. And all of this will be handled by the route controller. It is triggered when node objects are created or updated. So if you were to go and actually dig into the logic in the route controller, you would see that it is uh, dependent on changes to the, to the node objects. So these routes that we're setting up using the route controller, they are linked to the nodes themselves. Finally, the uh, service controller. So the service controller interacts with the cloud providers APIs mm -hmm. to set up load balancers and it provisions network components required for services. So in a cloud provider like Google Cloud, there will be the ability to set up uh, load balancers and in uh, Kubernetes, if we create a service of type load balancer, that will allow us to externally expose our uh, pods and route traffic from uh, external domains into our cluster. Uh, this is not something that um, GKE can do by itself. The underlying resources that are set up by the cloud provider in this case, it's not something that Kubernetes has the ability to do independently of a cloud provider because it needs to set up things like uh, globally accessible IP addresses and uh, external routing rules and so on. So in this case, we actually rely on the uh, cloud controller manager to integrate with the cloud providers API and that will go away, create a load balancer, and then we will uh, store that service object internally and it will refer to this external resource that is uh, a load balancer within the, the cloud provider. And again, as I mentioned, that allows us to, to route traffic externally into our cluster. Finally, the cloud controller itself has to have certain access within our cluster. And essentially uh, that is configured using a cluster role. First of all, the node controller must have full access to node objects, as you'd imagine. Service controller must have access to services, etc. And uh, this must be specified using a cluster role. And a cluster role is essentially a way of specifying a role-based access control within a cluster. Once we have this defined, we'll then define a cluster role binding. And that cluster role binding will link the cluster role to a service account, which can then um, be used to pro provide authentication to access each of these APIs within our cluster. So that is my uh, little video on the Cloud Controller Manager. I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. I'll get straight back to you. Please like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Thank you.